Hi, everybody. Welcome to Two Dumb Dads. I'm Chris, and we're back with another adventure in dadding, our series where we talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to be a parent and kind of create a little notation of our our current moment. Um, This week, Nick is here with a story about his life and what he's been going through this week. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go. So my adventure in dadding. I'll be totally honest. I'm actually recording this a week before it'll be released, but um, it was on my mind, so I thought it was a really good time to uh, talk about it. So my adventure in dadding is kind of a big fail in parenting, and but then also kind of a minor success. Um, but I guess I'll have to explain it. So probably two weeks ago, um, I was home with Miles by myself uh, late one night. So Sarah's about to work uh, two events in a row, but one of them is going to take her away for 12 solid days, which that'll be probably its own adventure in dadding. Um, but whenever these big events happen, um, the lead up usually means that Sarah's just at work late um some nights so um that leaves you know a lot of the nighttime ritual stuff of miles getting home and getting ready for bed and dinner to me and not this is not a bad thing i I like doing it um most of the time but um this particular night miles got home kind of late um so you know i got him dinner and we were watching a movie but he really needed a bath and uh, i think i've mentioned it as late miles has really been whiny um it's not even throwing tantrums. Like tantrums will still happen occasionally. It's just being whiny. And I think it happens for numbers of reasons. And it, it sometimes is worse when it's Sarah and I than just me. Or just sometimes it's worse when it's just Sarah. It just depends. And I think that a lot of things are going on. I think that, um, again, you know, uh, he's found out now that he can't always have what he wants. And so that results in some whining because we don't maybe we don't have it or – Whatever. Um, sometimes I think he doesn't know the word for it, and so, or he'll try to say it and you don't understand him, and then he grows frustrated, and so he whines. Um, and sometimes I think it's just pushing limits to see how far uh, he can push us to get what he wants. And I totally understand this is all part of him being a toddler, and, and it's just part of it, right? It's part of these two years old, three years old, and maybe even into four years old. Um, being a kid, it's also somewhat of his personality. So as much as my son is really funny and vibrant, and I think if you talk to the people that, you know, are his teachers at school, he's really well liked and he's a good little boy. Um, he also is extraordinarily stubborn and really strong-willed, um, and doesn't like to relent to the thing that he wants. And so that is a challenge, parenting, and, I, and it is right now very evident. Anyway, so back to this night. So Miles needs to take a shower. And so I go, hey, Miles, let's take a shower. And he goes, okay, okay, because he tends to like showers. And we get into the shower, and um, you'd have to describe our shower, but we have like a second hose that's on a uh, slider. I think it's because of a handicap accessible shower. And this thing doesn't stand up very well. When, it, when I can get it all the way up, it's a perfect size shower for him. But it, it slid down when he got in the shower. And so I think it scared him a little bit, but he also just was being whiny. And it just kept happening, and he desperately needed to get a shower. It was something that just needed to happen. And so I got angry, and I yelled at him, but I got, like, really angry. I was so tired from the day, and I was so frustrated, and I was so tired of him whining that I I snapped. And so, you know, I yelled at him and said, you know, you just need to take a shower, and you just need – it just has to happen. And I kind of grabbed him and, like – told me, oh, Miles, you need to stop whining. And then at this point, he was half wet and covered in soap. Um, so I had to get him clean. So then I had to just take the hose and and wash him off. And at this point, he is, he is really, really upset, which is understandable because now not only was he frustrated about the shower and then scared because of the shower, and then I, and then I yelled at him. And then um, – you know, then I had to like basically force to clean him with the soap off, which that made him even more upset. And I could, and so you know, I got down, I got him in a towel, and I'm still just fuming, I'm irrationally angry. But you know, I pick him up and I hug him, and I, I take him upstairs, and I rock with him for like 35, 40 minutes, and just rock and rock and rock. And finally, he settles down, and you know, I, I give him a hug and I tell him I love him, and um, you know, we go down and we watch a movie. And, you know, then he's okay, and he's back to his normal, smiley self, and and I, since this happened, have just been um, rocked with guilt. Um, 
and really just felt like I failed my son. And maybe I did a little bit, um, but failed as a dad. Because for me, and we've talked about this, one of the things that I've tried really hard to do is curtail the amount I yell at him. Um, I love both my parents very much, and they're great parents, but my dad did a lot of parenting through yelling. It's kind of his default. And again, that is what he learned. Um, And by proxy, it's also, I think, what I learned, because we learned to parent or how not to parent from our parents. And there are very few things that I will do different than what my parents did because they were pretty incredible, but that's one of them. I don't want to yell at my son. I don't mind talking stern to him because that's part of it, and if I do have to yell, if those situations happen, I want them to be warranted um, and to be like the last case scenario, right? Like this is this is the nuclear option. Uh, for, you know, for some parents, that was when you used to spank a kid, and I don't want obviously – Spank my child, but you know, if I have to yell at him, if I have to go down that route, I want it to be direct and purposeful and only used in the utmost of importance because I feel like yelling, while it can be very effective because it can be scary and you become a scary figure, should be used incredibly sparingly. Um, and I didn't. I used it in a moment where I was just angry. And I was frustrated at my day. I was frustrated that I was by myself. I was frustrated that he wouldn't just do what I needed him to do. Um, And I took it out on him. And um, that had repercussions. So, um, well, it didn't have repercussions on him towards me. Like he still loves me and hugs me and is excited to see me. And that didn't last. What it had repercussions from um, is he didn't want to take a shower anymore. This thing that was somewhat of an annoyance now became something he absolutely did not want to do because now it was scary. So I took – by my actions, I took this thing that was fun and wonderful and I stole it from my son. And I have been trying to come to grips with that for two weeks. Um, And what do you do with that, right? And I understand that I am also human and a person. And I have my faults, and I'm going to have my faults through the history of parenting my son. And I'm going to make loads of mistakes where I I fuck up, right? Like I make a mistake just like it's going to happen to my wife and it's going to happen to my friends who are parents and it's going to happen to him as a kid. Like we all make mistakes. Um, But it really put into perspective how my actions as a parent can have huge repercussions on on my child. Um, And so now I've been spending the last two weeks – and I, I finally told my wife about this too. And it's like, hey, it's my fault. And she was great. She's like, you know, these things happen. Like he can be incredibly frustrating. He's a kid. Um, so then I've been trying, how do I make him like the shower again? Um, how do I rebound from this thing that I caused? And it happened. I figured it out. This is the success. So we had to give him a shower again yesterday. Um, and I was trying to figure out how I could make this fun because he didn't want to go. So I grabbed bubbles and brought them in the shower with us and blew bubbles. And all of a sudden it was fun again. Um, now I'm not saying it's going to be, uh, I'm sure we're gonna have to blow some bubbles in the bath for a while now, but at least it was a way to problem solve it and turn this thing that I had ruined and make it fun again for him because that's important. Um, and you know, we're lucky in a lot of ways the kids are elastic and they can rebound and they can forgive. Um, but I'm having a lot of trouble forgiving myself for it. And uh, that's something I think as a parent I'm going to have to learn to do because it's going to happen again. I know it is. Um, That's not saying I'm saying, oh, it's okay that it happens, but I know who I am um, and I'm going to try to fight those urges, but I will make mistakes. Um, And it will happen because he will push me um, and I have to be better about it. But the important thing is to try to figure out how in those moments can I – not do this thing? How can I not revert to this this basic thing that I experienced as a kid that was a go-to for my parent that I don't want to continue? Um, but then also, if it does happen, how do I seek forgiveness for myself? Because I can apologize to him. I'm not someone who will ever not apologize to my child if I make a mistake. I think that's stupid. I think it's irrational. I think it doesn't teach your child the right lessons. And I always say my dad was great about that. But the bigger issue is how do I forgive myself because I'm still carrying with me this massive amount of guilt that I felt by what I did to my child. So 
that's kind of what I'm doing with. I'm glad that we got him to like the shower again. Um, and I'm working on the self care to forgive myself for my parenting shortfall. Um, because I really want my son to look back on me as I want him to look back at me and not remember being scared of me. Um, and as much as I love my dad, um, there are parts of my childhood that I know that like I was scared, not that he'd do anything, just that he would get mad. I was just always scared that he was mad. Um, and you come to terms with that as an adult, but like that was a part of my childhood that, that lingered. And I don't want that with my kid. I don't want my kid to think that I'm mad at him. Um, and that's on me. And so that's where I'm at. I'm sure it's going to be a continued struggle and it will be my struggle with my temper and my ability to deal with things. Um, but yeah, so that's my adventure in dadding kind of a, a fail, but a long-term thing I hope to continue to work on. All right. Uh, as always, you can find me at N Westermeyer on Twitter and N Westermeyer on Facebook. And you can check us out at our website, uh, www.2dumbdads, that's the number two, twodumbdads.com. And I'm sure Chris will add all his fun stuff too. All right. Everyone have a great one. <laughs> Gee, Nick, thanks. I'm glad you at least remembered to include all your information this time. So uh, you can find me at Chris Moss again on Twitter and at Rampant55 uh, Rampant on Twitch. You can find us at uh, twodumbdads.com and our email, emails at the number twodumbdads.com. And until next time, be well. <laughs>